This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Ebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. Yates Flooring Center chat line is opened. Go to double T973.com for that or the mobile app. Also, the uh, Visual Edge IT hotline is open at 806-771-0973. Uh, this is from Jacob. After a lecture about the Marriott, Chuck will reward the poor sap with a business card. The poor sap. The poor sap. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that at least they'd get something good out of it. <laughs> right, right. Uh, this, you don't give yourself enough credit, Jamie. Every day that I listen to you guys, I leave the show feeling better about my issues. Okay, well, good. <laughs> yeah, and that ma- that makes sense to me. It's the looking for advice from us. Sound advice. Yeah, that's not. Sound, ad- that sound advice. That doesn't seem like a smart decision on yeah. your part. Yeah, probably. There's pr- probably, some, probably some truth to that. If you're looking for, quote, Sound, sound advice. We can make sounds. I just, our advice is not sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No real, uh, I guess I said earlier, if you had anything big that happened uh, this weekend at your house that you want to, that you want to share, no, nothing real big at our place this weekend. It was just pretty calm. Nothing, nothing really out of control or anything. That's good. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, sometimes you like... Calm's okay. Calm's, <laughs> calm, calm's okay. <laughs> yeah. I didn't rustle too many feathers this weekend. So, I mean, I think everything was... I think there was a, there was a point in time it was looked like it could be a little rocky there for a moment, but it, it smoothed out. Okay. <laughs> so, there you go. There you go. Um, so, if you have a, a thought or a comment, we'll uh, hit us up on the AIDS Morning Center chat line. We don't talk a whole lot of hockey. In fact, we very rarely talk hockey. But man, uh, if you're a Boston Bruin fan living in uh, in Lubbock and uh, you're going to work this morning, and you and people know that you're a Boston Bruin fan, just kind of ease around them today because uh, the Bruins were eliminated uh, from the Stanley Cup playoffs in the opening round last night. A Game Seven overtime win by the Florida Panthers. And what's significant about that is that. Uh, Boston had had set new records for regular season success. I mean, they had they had just flown through the uh, the regular season. They were the most successful regular season team in NHL history, setting league records for most wins at 65 and points at 135 in a single season. Don't mean a thing without the ring. No, it don't. Uh, they won the President's Trophy, but. Um, since the uh, 85-86 season when the trophy was first awarded, 11 regular season champs made the Stanley Cup Finals with eight of them advancing and winning. No President's tr- Cup trophy, that, no President's Trophy winner, though, has advanced to the Stanley Cup since the NHL went to the wildcat format, wild card format in 2013-14. Um, so there's that, you know, and we see this in baseball going down the stretch where you have that really, really hot team um that's played great all year long and then they have to play somebody in the wild card where you know they had to fight and scrape and you know they just get in by the hair on their chinny chin chin and then they knock them off you know it's all about you know being hot at the right time sometimes too and sometimes Mm -hmm. it's about it's about a collapse but anyway so uh boston is out uh florida advances and that is our Stanley Cup uh, wrap up for the year, right there. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, one NBA note uh, from last night. While we're on it, Steph Curry had fifty, and the uh, Golden State Warriors hold off the Sacramento Kings. They win by twenty at the end of the day, um, but you know Steph Curry was was fantastic uh, yesterday, and so they win that series four games to three. Over the Kings, who won a series and you know advanced to be in the playoffs for the first time in a long, long time, but hard to you know if you're going to beat the defending champs, you got to probably get a hand in the face of Steph Curry. Yeah, he's a pretty good shooter, so you'd want to. <laughs> Even that sometimes not enough. No, and better be ready when he crosses half court too. 
Because he's got some sort of range. He does. Draymond Green apparently behaved himself in, enough to be able to, you know, stay in the ball game and not create. He played 38 minutes. Steph didn't kick anybody. Didn't kick anybody. Didn't stomp on anybody. Didn't stomp on anybody. You know. Didn't any, tweet out any pitchers. I, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Okay. Uh, Curry. Well, good was, for Draymond. We're right. all glad that he's just maturing right in front of our eyes. <laughs> God. It's amazing how you know a guy you know puts him in positions where. They first of all they lost a you know an NBA Finals because of him because he got kicked out of a series for a you know crucial game against Cleveland that allowed LeBron and company to to go in and win and he's still with the team um, but Curry last night went twenty of thirty eight uh, from the field and sh- scored fifty points he was seven of eighteen from distance that's that's pretty special and with night. him distance feels like an accurate term yeah. He's not shooting a bunch of bunnies. No, he's not shooting a bunch of bunnies. Not getting those easy uh, second chance points in the paint where somebody misses it and he's Johnny on the spot, right? He's the master of the what in the world? Oh, good. Good shot. Good shot, right? What are you doing? Okay, good shot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, This from the Ace Flooring Center uh, chat line. Hey, Chuck, in case you missed it, the Stars won their series. Okay. I mean, again... You know, right. we we give you a little we give you a little food on the spoon, man. You just got to just got to throw it back at us, just like a two year old. You know, just got to throw it right back at us. You know, try to help you out with a little. Well, if you're going to talk about the Boston Bruins, probably you should have talked about the local team. Probably right? so. Probably so. Yeah. Probably so. Probably so. He knew it was coming. <laughs> that would have made sense, Jamie. There's yeah. no way we would do that on this show. Hockey fans are a passionate group. They're going to stick up. I do respect that. I do respect the hockey guys and the and the. You know, and I'm not going to be this Johnny come lately. Oh, I love the playoff hockey. Man. Let's do it for that. I mean, if it, it it is pretty compelling. I mean, there's no question the fans are as passionate of any group. Maybe in professional sports um, in the United States, they might be the most passionate. Mm-hmm. Might might be the most passionate for their and you know in terms of creating home ice advantage, you know, versus home court or home field. They're a lot to be said for, you know, hockey being, you know, hockey fans being able to maybe affect the outcome of a game the most. Would you would you say that? Hockey fans are able to? Well, I mean, just if you're going to say fan uh, game atmosphere, fan atmosphere, things like that, that in playoff hockey, a, a, a sold-out arena, you know, cheering for fill-in-the-blank team can make more of an impact on a game than basketball or football or baseball. Professional sports. I, I'm, I'm not going to argue with you because I've never been to a playoff game in hockey. I, mm-hmm. I, you know, watching on TV, it definitely looks intense. Um, I, 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 can't, I can't say that you're wrong, but I, I don't know that you're right. But I don't know. Their atmosphere is phenomenal. There's no question. Yeah. But I, I think, I don't know, I think it's some. Some venues in baseball in the postseason that are pretty intense. Yeah. Pretty intense. Yeah, and I would that. say the same thing about basketball. I don't know that. Didn't both football. road teams win their game sevens yesterday, though? You mean with uh, Colorado losing and uh, and then Boston, Boston losing. losing? Yeah. So I guess the fans just didn't give enough yesterday, Jeff. It's on the fans, yeah. They, no, just, they just didn't give enough. Mm-hmm. Right. They did all they could do. Yeah. I don't know. You, you're probably right. I don't know. Uh, this from Troy, just tuning in. How about Josh Young's Grand Slam? Yeah, boy, the, he turned into a Yankee killer over the weekend, didn't he? It's nice. Yeah. Way to go, Josh. <laughs> Way to go, Josh. Yeah. Just good to see him back in the lineup. No kidding. Right. Absolutely. Missed the second home run by about a foot and a half, two feet tops. His double in the eighth inning was crushed and hit the top of the wall and bounced back in. Rangers won yesterday 15-2. to two. So That would be two home runs in the game. They won uh, Saturday 2 nothing. Usually you see the low-scoring game after the high-scoring game. You know, like you have this high-scoring game of, you know, 15 to whatever, and then you, the next day it's the, the low-scoring. Uh, Rangers also won on Friday 5-2 to two after losing on Thursday uh, to the Yankees 4-2. to two. So there you go. At least you didn't have to go witness that this weekend. I did not. <laughs> that was, that's yeah, positive. Yeah, who would want to be in the stands to see a Josh Young Grand Slam? 
I'm just talking about from a Yankee fan's perspective. And he's a huge Red Raider oh, baseball I know, fan, I know, too. I know, I know. He would, have been, he would have been perplexed. Although, at that point in time, maybe you would have been, you would have been rooting. You would have, you'd have rooted for Josh in that case. No. 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 Okay. No. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if if uh, it would have been uh, oh fine because it was didn't decide the game. Yeah. But if it was in the ninth and tie game, I'd have been rooting for the Yankees. Okay. Get him and out. Josh knows that. He knows that. Okay. Yes. Uh, this I actually know a diehard Bruins fan in Lubbock. He's already a bit of a Richard. I'm guessing he's extra today. All right. So. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Time for this day in sports history. Today is the first day of the merry, merry month of May. And with that, here is Jeff McGuire. It's the first day of the month, and there are a lot of firsts that happened today. Mm-hmm. 1901. Chicago White Sox outfielder Herm McFarland is the fir- hits the first grand slam in American League history mm. in a 19 to 9 win over the Detroit Tigers. The Tigers committed 12 errors in this game. Wow. Mac attack there. Mac attack. <laughs> yes. That would be accurate. <laughs> 1920, legendary slugger, slugger Babe Ruth Hits his very first home run as a New York Yankee. Mm. Any guesses on who he hit it against? Uh, Lefty Gomez. Well, spe- specifically talking about the team. Oh. Red Sox. That would be correct. A 6 nothing win over his former club. 1951, future baseball Hall of Fame slugger Mickey Mantle hits his first career home run in an 8-3 to win over the White Sox in Chicago in 1969. Houston Astros hurler Don Wilson blanks the Reds 4 to nothing for his second career no-hitter at, at uh, Crosley Field in Cincinnati. 1988, after scoring 50 points in Game 1 in the NBA Eastern Conference Playoff Series, Michael Jordan has 55 for the Bulls' 106-101 win over the Cleveland Cavaliers in Game 2. He is the first to score 50-plus points in consecutive playoff games. 1991, the Ricky Henderson-Nolan Ryan double dip. Ricky Henderson steals number 939 for his career. That would be the Major League Baseball record. And a 7-4 win over the Yankees. While Nolan Ryan pitches his seventh no-hitter in uh, against Toronto, where they win 3 to nothing. Very famous upper deck card, I think, of the two of them on there. Okay. With uh, Ricky holding up the base and Ryan holding up the ball. And in 2000, Barry Bonds is the first Major League Baseball player to hit a home run into San Francisco Bay as the Giants beat the Mets 10-3. to He hits 35 there during his San Francisco career. I think that's really cool. I don't uh, ever want to get in a kayak, but I think that the people that are there... Um, I think that with the nets and everything, I think that's just adds to the atmosphere. Looks fun out there. And kayaking is a lot of fun. Looks cold. The water looks cold. In San yeah, Francisco, I imagine it is. Yeah. 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 Probably is. Yeah. Especially in, you know, April and in October. Yeah. Especially October. First of the month means it's time for our foods of the month. Oh, nice. National beef. Barbecue, loaded potato, egg, hamburger, salad, salsa, and strawberry month. Goodness. And this is where uh, I am cued by Robert Giovanetti to say, have you ever had a fried egg on a hamburger? No. If you haven't, you should, because it's really good. I'm not a fan of the fried egg. I've and never have had been. that on a hamburger, though. I... I... I don't care for that. I like a hamburger. I don't care for fried eggs. I'm just not going to have a fried egg on my hamburger. How about you? I don't like fried eggs. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I'm surely not going to ruin a cheeseburger with it. (laughs) Well, they are fantastic. You could say today is National Ogre Day, but that wouldn't make any sense unless you've seen the movie Shrek. It's National Chocolate Parfait Day. Mm. Because, you know, who doesn't love a parfait? They have layers. Bad Shrek joke. Happy birthday, former uh, Red Raider Wes Walker, 42 today. 
And uh, country music superstar Tim McGraw is 56. And on this day in 1931 in New York City, President Herbert Hoover officially dedicates the New York City's Empire State Building by pressing a button in the White House that turns on the building's lights. Relax. Clearly, this is just a ruse. Someone in New York actually had to, had to flip a switch. And that's this day in sports history. All right, 649 this morning here on the morning drive. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for the uh, Empire State. I wondered if you were going to get that in today, the Empire State Building. Just the opening of it. Didn't know how that... I didn't know that Herbert Hoover was uh, was involved, though. The former president. Uh, let's see here. The Yates Flooring Center chat line. Um... Jamie, would you please tell the Young family to give us s- number three? The ruse has gone on long enough. They need to call him. Son number three. Son number three. Oh, okay, son number three. It was just misspelled. I was, the ruse has gone on long enough. They need to cough him up. There's not a third son though. Just two. Yeah. Just two. They would have to open up for production again, and then it would take you know 17 years to get to uh, to fruition here before you would would see that and probably most of us would be uh, moving along by then. Uh, This football has the best home field advantage because the crowd can actually affect the snap count for the opponents. Basketball would be next because of free throws being affected by the background crowd. Okay. All right. Uh, You don't don't think a loud crowd is affecting a pitcher who's struggling with his control? Sure I do. Because I I do. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you can... I Look mean, at all the sports and see where that affects them. Yeah, from time to time. Yeah, yeah. Sure. It is the most aggy thing ever. But <coughs> the ball four, ball five, ball six chant that they do when a pitcher is really struggling has to get into their head. Yeah, no pitcher. doubt. I completely agree with Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a question for Coach Gardner, but maybe you can enlighten us a little bit jamie why did uh coach matt gardner force i don't know if this is i don't know if this is true force our closers to throw breaking balls with their first two pitches it's very easily scouted let them throw fastballs that approach doesn't work i don't know if there's any forcing of things or not well he's calling the pitches yeah yeah i don't know that every batter starting off with back-to-back breaking balls i don't i don't know that that's necessarily the case i'm sure he does it a lot but tries to mix things up but and these are the questions that you get on days sure. after your pitching staff yeah, when implodes it doesn't, and can't throw strikes. When, when it doesn't work. Yep. When it doesn't work. But, uh, I mean, it it didn't work yesterday. Whatever. I mean, it, you just didn't – you didn't have – guys didn't have command. Like I said earlier, you know, certain times you, you make the right call or put the right guy in or send the right guy to the plate, and then he just doesn't perform. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it felt like a lot of that yesterday. Um, the, those guys not performing now is when your when your group as a whole doesn't perform. That's when people start looking at the the manager or the pitching coach or whatever. And I and I understand that to a certain degree. But, I mean, did I hear you right yesterday also saying that they didn't turn a double play all weekend? All weekend they had one chance and uh, threw it into the dugout. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you've got to get the ground ball with a runner on first. So I, it, it's not like it happens every inning. But Yeah, you were number two in the country coming in and just didn't get it done. Yeah. Which, I mean, didn't – I mean, balls were hitting the air or whatever. I mean, it wasn't like you you were terrible. I mean, the, through the first two games, you gave up three runs and you gave up two runs. So you are giving up five runs. It wasn't as if, you know, they were just crushing you. Yeah. I mean, yesterday. You, and you were – I mean – until about the sixth inning yesterday, you were pitching it decent yesterday, especially on a Sunday, and then you just imploded. You helped him out a lot. Was the sixth inning yesterday about as bad an inning as you've seen in quite some time? Mm-hmm. Just in terms of maybe execution, especially maybe from a pitching standpoint? Well, it's, as I said, I don't know if I said this on air or if I said this in the break, but the sixth inning that's where you um, you gave up two runs. You gave up the lead. You They didn't have a single hit. It was three walks and two hit by pitches. And felt like every count went to 3-2. Two. 
even the guys that you were getting out. And I said to Jeff, again, I don't remember if it was on air or not, people who hate baseball, this is this this inning is a prime example, okay? Because you had a key inning where one team took the lead over the other. It lasted probably every bit of 30 minutes, okay, or close to it. There wasn't a single hit, okay? There was no action whatsoever, and but yet it was a key, key inning. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it was painful to watch. You, Just you, painful. I didn't hear you say that. What I heard you say was uh, a, a disaster of an inning, and then you Just, recap the inning and then went to break. Just throw strikes and play yeah. baseball. But it was I, a disaster of an inning. I mean, it was it was just a beat down to watch. You know, I I it's it's funny because I felt like you only by only giving up two runs after everything that happened. I thought, okay, well, I mean that's. But it completely changed the momentum and yeah. the feel of the game. Completely changed the feel of the game. Yeah. yeah completely. I, you right. know, Austin Green kind of bailed you out and turned it back in your direction. But you just couldn't you couldn't keep it going in that direction. Yeah, I mean, you even said you didn't feel like that eight six was enough, um, and it wasn't, unfortunately. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T ninety seven three, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Thanks for being with us with Jamie Linton, Jeff McGuire, and Chuck Hines. We crack the code at this time uh, every day, every weekday at seven fifteen. Your chance to guess the code next comes up at ten fifteen. So. You uh, need to go to double t com and enter your code uh, to crack, cracking the safe open. You know, you know, is it, you know, this, like, I think my locker code in high school is like 32 to the right, six to the left, and 33 back to the right. I think that opened up my locker. Okay. 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 I think that was it was pretty close to that anyway. Mm-hmm. So that's not the that's not the code. But if you they do bronze that locker at your high school, right? It, it, it did. It's it's oh. uh oh. it's encased in plastic. Okay. Nice. Um <clears throat> so you if you do it if you do it this week, you know, if you get it this week, you get a thousand bucks, okay? And we'll cut you a check um right away and then you can take it down to your respective bank and uh and put it into your account you can just go spend it if you want. Uh, Crack the Code is presented by Double T 97.3 and The Home Zone, where they make your house a home every single day at 50th and Indiana. So what you need to do is go to Double T 97.3.com, enter the contest called Crack the Code, fill out just a couple of little questions, and then you become eligible not only to try to crack the code every day, you can do it a couple times a day, but at the end, on June the 1st, somebody's going to win $5,000 when we crack that code, okay? So you can either win, Sweet. You can either win a G-Wiz this week or five Gs uh, June the 1st, okay? Would you like to win a G-Wiz this week? You ever heard it called a G-Wiz? I'm guessing that you haven't. I haven't. Jeff, you've heard it called a G-Wiz, right? A thousand bucks, G-Wiz? Maybe. Kind of vaguely, remotely sounds familiar. Okay. I've always just, just you know, you know K. Okay. That's right. You know, I've heard 1K, that 5K. Those I've heard. G whiz. Okay. Not Although heard. you did get me thinking, like, in your little spiel there, Chuck, my intermediate, intermediate school locker combination. Uh huh. I remember. I'm not sure I ever opened my locker in high school. Really? Not sure I opened it. Had one all four years. Not sure I opened it. I carried my books. I had a backpack for it. Did you have a locker in high school? I did. Yeah, I did. Mm. Yeah, we didn't have locks on them. Oh, you didn't? <laughs> you guys just trusted each other. I guess our gym locks had like had locks that you had to buy and bring a lock. Mm-hmm. But, but our gym lockers had those, but no, or just for our school books or whatever. Uh. Uh-uh. Okay. No, they were not. Okay. So I didn't have to remember anything. Wow. Uh, somebody says this. We're going to start calling you Chunkin' Little if you don't watch out, Chuck. Chunkin' Little. No, just Chuckin' Little. Chuckin' Little. Like Chicken Little, like, but Chuckin' Little. Like chuckin the little. sky is falling. Right. No, I got it. Yeah. I understood okay. that. Yeah. <sighs> chuckin' Little. All right. Um, <clears throat> what would you make of the... I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, it is pretty funny. 
What did you make of no Red Raiders other than Tyree Wilson being drafted? Did that surprise you? No. Yeah. No, that's kind of what I expected. Did anybody not get signed that you thought would get signed to a free agent's uh, contract? Yeah, I don't think so. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Sir Roderick Thompson, he goes to um, the New Orleans Saints. I don't think he's got a shot there. They did draft a running back ahead of him, but I think he's got a, I think he's got a shot there. I mean, he's he seems like a guy that would uh, kind of fit in with what their needs are. Um, Trey Wolf signs with the Tennessee Titans. Um, they had the uh, the former Aggie kicker, uh, Fat Randy. Remember him? Uh, and then they got rid of him, um, and then they signed a guy in free agency who made like three of his last four. So he's I think he's got a chance down there. Okay. Okay. And then uh, Marquise Waters signed with the New York Jets. So cool. we'll, we'll see how those uh, see how those guys go. Mm-hmm. I was, I guess, the one guy probably was a little surprised that there wasn't signed, and maybe he will in the next couple of days. Was Weston Wright just because of his size along the offensive line? Mm-hmm. He's a massive individual, but they got a lot of massive individuals in the National Football League. They do. They you know do. the. The question that I would have... they specialize in massive individuals in the National Football yeah, League. Yeah, the thing that I would The thing that I would wonder for Western Wright is, can you stay healthy? Because it, like, it seemed like he got dinged up quite a bit on that offensive line. It seemed like he was going down quite a bit. So that's just, that's just my take. Um, Mel Kuyper Jr. issued out his... his uh, draft grades and he gave the Cowboys a B okay okay he said there's not much flash in this class which is not usually how Jerry Jones does things but I can't knock many of these selections Uh, Dallas did well he like you said gave the Cowboys a a B Mozzie Smith was their uh, number one draft pick he's a defensive tackle he's 323 pounds should hopefully help the run defense um for the Cowboys. Uh, they also picked up Luke Schoonmaker, who is a tight end from Michigan. Um, others were available. Uh, here's the thing about Schoonmaker. When you when you look at him, is he will be 25 years old by the time his rookie year starts. It's an old guy. It's an old guy. Mm-hmm. Um, Kuyper's thought on that is, the question is, how much more room does he have to develop? Which is, I think, a fair question. Yeah. Probably not as okay. much as a guy who was three or four years younger. Yeah. They did also take, the Cowboys did, the uh, Texas linebacker DeMarvian Overshone. Um, I think a lot of people were pretty pleased with that pick. Um, Lewis Riddick uh, is one of his favorites. He says he can be impressive as a blitzer. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's always good to put pressure on the quarterback, right? Vilame Fahoko, an edge rusher, was taken on day three. That's uh, Brendan Fahoko's cousin. Remember him? Played for the Red Raiders. I do. Then bolted for LSU. Um, uh, Kuiper said this, I highlighted him as a potential sleeper in December. Uh, they also picked up Deuce Vaughn. I think Deuce Vaughn's going to make this team. Um, yeah, he labels him as a great player in a 5-5 package. He said, I'd love to see him succeed in Dallas where his dad is a scout. His dad, Charles, is a scout for the Cowboys. Who's the guy that was the smallest running back for K-State back in the day that had such a good career with, like, the Eagles? Mm. That's what I want him to become. Okay. The guy that always felt like he had, like, 600 yards against the Cowboys every game. I can't believe I can't remember that. Okay. Uh, I, I don't have his name off the top of my head, but as soon as you tell me, I'll be able to go, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. So, yeah, I hope Deuce Vaughn. I think Deuce Vaughn could, 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 could be. Um, Darren Sproles. Darren Sproles. Yeah, boy, he was. He was, he, was a, he was a killer. I think I would probably say that Sproles was better catching the ball out of the backfield, mm-hmm. but that Vaughn's a better just pure runner. He just seemed slippery, shifty. You know, the guy that you can't bring down. Oh, when he's tough. Been, when you're small, you better be. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, somebody says this, Weston Wright, question mark. He had a year of eligibility left here and wasn't in the plans. How would he make it in the NFL? I didn't say he's going to make it. I just said I was surprised that he didn't sign with somebody. That's it. That's it. I mean, that, I mean, and he still may. Who knows? 
Um, and I don't, I'm not aware of all the... If I was an NFL team, I I wouldn't have been dying to go after anything that came from Texas Tech offensive line in 2022. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Uh, Due to COVID, aren't they almost all getting older? Yes. Yes, that's, that's correct. That's, that's correct. But anyway, I just, I just thought that that was a little bit of a surprise there. Adrian Fry wasn't signed either. Yeah. So maybe that was a bigger surprise than, Mm -hmm. than, um, um, Western right, but yeah, I would agree with that. So, and, and who knows, he, he still may get picked up. I mean, and you know, in this, I'm sure, I'm sure that, uh, all these guys are trying to figure out a way to, uh, uh, you know, at least extend their career just a little bit. Boy, a lot of people off the gates from, we got smart people listening this morning, Jamie, mm-hmm. a lot of Darren Sproles. Um, yep. And thanks to our, our man, Choice Woodman, whom you'll hear at 9 a.m. on the end of the bench on 100.7 The Score. He always seems to be a, he's like an assister to this show. He's an educated assister to the show. We appreciate his efforts. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's a good mm-hmm. good teammate, right? Helping us out. Let him know I beat him to the punch this time, though. Oh, Just you did first? Know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I looked it up myself. Okay, good for you. Wow. I just didn't want Choice to know he didn't win this time. (laughs) (laughs) You're full of vim and vigor this morning. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Jamie's question of the day on Double T 97.3 is presented by Bizarre Solutions. Call them today for a free cybersecurity audit. All right, what you got there, Kimasabi? All right, we're going with Red Raider football today. Okay. And really Big 12 football, not Red Raider football. Okay. I want you to tell me who's going to finish one and two in the Big 12 football standings this year. And I think the tougher part, 13 and 14. Ooh. Ooh, 13 and 14. All right, so let me, we've got a, I mean, we've got a new Big 12 uh, this year. It's because of uh, the new... And because of the new, you know, guys coming to, the new kids coming to school. I hit the breaking news sounder there, Jeff. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You want to repeat that? (laughs) The breaking news that you just threw at us. Well, Uh, I mean, we know that. We we knew this. I mean, I was just, I was just kind of being somewhat rhetorical is what I was, was I was being there. Cannot be serious! (laughs) I wasn't, I wasn't trying to be flippant or anything. I was just, okay, so who's going to be one? Who's going to be two? Who's going to be 13? Who's going to be 14? Um, I think Texas is going to be one. Texas Tech is going to be two. I think TCU is going to be 13, and Iowa State's going to be 14. Wow. That's a big drop for your regular season champion and college football yeah. championship part. They don't have a whole lot coming back. From the national championship game to second to last in the conference. Write it down, buddy boy. <clears throat> Man, that would be fun. <laughs> I'm not complaining if that's what happens. Yeah. Uh I am gonna say that Texas will be one. I'll say Baylor will be two. Mm-hmm. The bottom of the conference I think stays the exactly the same as it was last year with Iowa State and West Virginia. I think your incoming teams will beat both of those two. All right. I'm taking Kansas State at one, Texas at two. Mm. I am going with West Virginia at 13 and Iowa State at 14. You have some of that extra purple Kool-Aid while you're there in Manhattan? I mean, I think we've... We've talked about this. I think Kansas State will be in the title game again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've re- returned their quarterback and a lot. Mm-hmm. And do lose Deuce Vaughn, which matters. But Sure, yeah, sure. They bring a lot back. Yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. You're probably, you're probably, you're probably. I, I uh, yeah, I just, I, I don't hate Kansas State like you Jayhawk people do. So. That's okay. No, yeah. That's all right. I mean. And I love their campus. It's really cool. No, I mean, I, I'm not particularly fond of them right now, though. I don't I, hate them like Chuck does, but I'm not particularly fond. I will tell you this. I hate what they have done to their sports complex because it looks gorgeous. 
I hate it. I mean, the football stadium, when it's lit up at night, man, it looks awesome. They've built this new football facility east on the east side of the stadium. Um, the basketball arena needs work. I mean, it needs it needs big-time work. Um, I've not been in the baseball stadium, but it looks like they've done a great job of, of retooling it and re- renovating it and adding to it. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it's fine. It's yeah. it's nice. I think it's what's, not, what's better is they they have a full indoor facility and all that good stuff. I think what, and, what they where they've spent their money is on the area that the student athletes mm-hmm. get to see. I think that's and you spend time in. Yeah. Then they you know what this, I hate about Kansas State? They well, took two or three from me over the weekend in baseball that you split with them in basketball this year, and they continue to beat you in football yeah, every year. Yeah, there you that's go. what I hate about Kansas sure. State. So that's their stadiums can be great. They could be great people. I'm tired of losing to Kansas State. Um, and then they have this this massive rowing center that they've built for their Olympic sports. Doesn't uh, bother me. We don't have a rowing team here. And then the uh, volleyball. The volleyball is that open yet? Did you see if that was open yet? It's it's right there by the baseball stadium. Doesn't look like it. It's still the, humongous. That and then they're building something out behind the outfield walls. I think that's for track and their Olympic sports. Is that right? That's the combination with the volleyball. Yeah, it's half and half. Yeah, yeah, and it is massive. It is. It is. I mean, it looks like they've added on to it. The one bad thing about that is, in the past, you had. I felt like if you're sitting in the stands, you had a, I mean, a cool view across mm-hmm. towards seeing the football stadium and that beautiful facility and now you just have a really ugly building that's yeah that's blocked the view blocks the view now yeah. so you look out to left field and you just see the back side of an ugly building yeah which is not the most it's not aesthetically ideal. pleasing yeah yeah well they'll probably put a power cat stripe on it or something like that <clears throat> yeah 736 this morning here on the morning drive so if you have a opinion or thought on who's going to go one two in uh, in the big 12 or 13 14 in the big 12 um so would you have tech at third then in your mind right now are you willing to go that high or is it fourth i probably i don't have a team that says they need to be three in front of the Red Raiders. Um, but I think I'm just too cautious to put them at there that there at three. I probably would put them at four. Where do you have Texas? Three then? Two. Two. Well that's right because you said K State and Texas. Where do you have Baylor? Uh not ahead of the Red Raiders. Not ahead of the Red Raiders. But Jeff had you had Baylor you had Baylor up there. Jeff just is to just tired of losing to Baylor. Yeah, just trying to jinx him. Yeah. I'm really tired of losing Kansas State. The Baylor losses at least have made sense. They've been a much better program than you've been over the last five years. Mm-hmm. See, and, and I get how you guys, I mean, Chuck's a different story growing up a Kansas fan. I get where Jeff is coming from, frustration. I'm not frustrated with Kansas State right now. I'm frustrated with the Tech bullpen yesterday. Oh, I'm sure. frustrated with the Tech offense on Friday. Okay, I I'm not mad at Kansas State for winning those games. I'm I'm more disappointed that the Red Raiders didn't perform. You know, the last four innings on the mound yesterday and and gave a game away. So I I don't have hatred for K State for that. I I, no, I mean I don't fault. mean to to downplay mm-hmm. their actions or you know mm-hmm. a guy had a big triple late in the game or whatever. Um, but I feel like that they didn't win that they didn't win it. We gave it to them. Yeah, and, and that's somewhat Red Raider arrogance, I guess. Whatever, but but we I, I guess my same. feeling is more disappointment disappointment in the way we played than I am like, oh, those guys were jerks. How many times have we been able to say that though? In a, from a football perspective as well, that you gave away the game to Kansas State. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it's. Yeah. They we always seem to give it to them. We we and okay. Well, let's stop doing it. Let's really. But doesn't make me hate them. We they, can, it's not they their can also fault. stop taking advantage of it yeah. too. They're allowed to bobble the ball a little bit or you know fumble it back to us from time to time. They are too perfect at times against us. Well, the interesting part is they actually walked more in the series than we did. <laughs> we <laughs> just walked them all in bunches in key times. Mm-hmm. 
uh, of all the of all the moves yesterday um, that were made, you know, from a pitching standpoint, after you get past uh, Petty and Coombs, and maybe even Bridges, which which one do you think Coach Tadlock would like to have back? Hmm. Um. That's an interesting question. Um. Does he just stick with Josh Sanders instead of going with Brandon Gurton? Yeah. Does he put in Brandon Beckel, who struggled the day before, and just I, and the only reason I question that is because at the end of the game he was out there, looked like he was warming to get ready if he was needed. Does he just go with Beckel instead of Gurton and just skip the Gurton experience yesterday? But I mean that's so easy or hard to say now because you're, sure. you're talking twenty twenty. But the other thing is maybe go with Blessy longer. But I just still don't know what the situation is with his arm. But I was hoping we were going to see more of Blessy this weekend. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T ninety seven three, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I don't know when I've been speaking for everybody that's really in the heart of the Dallas Cowboys is standing here with a tear in our eye. We're so happy to have you on the Dallas Cowboys. I can't thank you enough. Well, what I really want to say, you earned every ounce of me being able to make this call. I'm so excited. There's just something magical about this moment that may be bigger than we even realize here talking to you on the phone. That's the uh, owner of the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones, with Chris Vaughn, his uh, scout, one of his scouts, one of many scouts for the Cowboys, talking to the six-round draft choice, choice, Deuce Vaughn, the son of Chris Vaughn. So uh, that's pretty cool. I had not heard that uh, until just now. So uh, really, really cool that uh, that uh, that uh, that that transpired. And I thought that was a great point that Jerry made, that you have earned uh, every – uh, opportunity to get this call uh, wasn't just because his dad worked for the Cowboys. Uh, it'd be hard to cut him <laughs> now, Jamie, without there being some hard feelings. But the, I think they understand that the, the NFL is Hope obviously so. a big business. Yeah. yeah, but I do think that uh, Chris Vaughn or Deuce Vaughn can make make a hand uh, for the Cowboys. Um, Jeff had sent me the uh, the phone call that they had made to. Uh, Mozzie Smith the other day, and I was I was highly disappointed with it. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't anywhere near the spirit that we've normally gotten from Jerry. Of it's Jerry Jones, you're a big cowboy. wasn't any of that. It was it was very very low key. It was very disappointing, but that was that was top notch there. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, some thoughts here from the Yates Flooring Center uh, chat line. Never thought I'd be listening to a spirited banana peeling debate, but here we are. Yeah, we get this. Uh, damn it! Now I've got to go to the grocery store just for bananas to see how that works. Right, right. Uh, here's a better question, Jamie, from uh, the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Um, My banana was good, by the way, during the break. It was. Yeah, you handled it. Quite, quite well. Somebody wanted to know the number of wins needed, in your opinion, to to make the tournament I at this really, point. I can't really answer that. I mean, we'd have to know what everybody else is doing. Yeah. I don't just think a number thrown at you. Yeah. Would 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 do it. Okay, so um, <clears throat> maybe the most basics of all questions would be: you have to have a winning record in the Big Twelve, don't you? At the very least, you're nine and nine right now. That's probably fair. You know, I mean, you got two series left, one with West Virginia and one with Kansas. Um, yeah, if you're if you're below 500, you're I wouldn't guess that you're making the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Because, and part of that's going to be because of how um, the, uh, you know, the rest of the Big 12 shapes up. It's not like anybody's running away with anything in the Big 12. Surely not. You know, because I mean, you're West your RPIs, rolling, but they they have, they finish with a pretty tough schedule. Yeah. At the Red Raiders and on the road at the Longhorns to finish. Yeah, yeah. So I, I w- and so here's the deal. I mean, it makes that West Virginia series really, really huge right now because 
if you go there and you lose two of three, um, so then you're what you'd be ten and ten and eleven, right? So you'd you'd at least have to win two of three against Kansas to at least be in a spot where you'd be a, a little above five hundred. Yeah, I mean, I'm, it's it's not the goal at any point. Hey, we want to be a little bit above five hundred. No, it's I know, just, I know. You just got to start playing better baseball. Yeah, yeah. Be more consistent, both offensively and defensively. Again, I think that everybody this weekend is going to look at you know the bullpen let a lead late lead slip away both Friday and Sunday, and that's fair. Um, but offensively, especially on Friday, he only scored two runs. Okay. Uh, it feels like there's about three guys hitting in the lineup right now. Nolan Hester, Kevin Bazell, and um, your freshman shortstop, Tracer Lopez. I mean, you're just not getting – I mean, Gavin Cash had two hits for the weekend. Um, I was just know, getting ready to ask to, you about him. Come to rely and expect him to do great things. You know, Gage Harrelson's not swinging it well. Um you know, Dylan Carter was off to such an amazing start, and then he got hurt. He's come back and just hasn't been the same player offensively. Um, you know, it's just Austin Green has really struggled. Uh, obviously, he had a big three-run homer yesterday. It was his first hit of the weekend, and he came up empty in a lot of key spots throughout the weekend where you needed him to just put the ball in play at times, get a sack fly, and and was unable to do it. So we uh, love the story of a guy battling back and making a big swing. It's interesting, the two big swings on yesterday's contest before Austin's three-run homer. He was 0 for 11 on the weekend, hits the three-run bomb to give you the lead. Uh, You go a couple innings later, and their guy, Brendan Jones, was 0 for 13 on the weekend, and he had the two-run triple that gave him the lead back. So it's a story of, hey, perseverance. You just worry about the next at-bat, all that good stuff, and you never know when you're going to help your team, and those two guys did it. But um, you just you got to get more production. I mean, there's just a lot of guys in this lineup right now that aren't doing much for you. Are they pitching cash different, or is he just in a slump? I don't know. I just, you know, I mentioned it with Jeff yesterday. It felt like early on in the season Gavin was, I mean, the – of his first 10 home runs, I bet um, more than half were to left field. Okay? I haven't seen him hit the ball hard to left field in a long time. Okay? So, in my opinion, he's he's trying to pull everything, and he's hit some incredible home runs doing it, no, no question. But he just doesn't look like he's staying on the ball as long now to me. And it looks like he's, you know, he's trying to swing as hard as he can and it's not, um, you know, early on in the season where he was having trouble with breaking balls. Now he's tardy on fastballs, and so it just feels to me like he's not he's not seeing the ball well right now. Did the K State guys do a better job of battling at the plate yesterday? Kind of, it seemed like there were, man, a number of times where it was like foul ball after foul ball after foul ball after foul ball. Um, so I don't know if that played into it, played in anything or not. I just wondered. No. Okay. I mean, what it plays into is that your pitcher's not able to put guys away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the green home run. So I was listening to that on the radio and, and heard your call. And 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 then you, then I went inside and my wife was watching on TV. And it, it with with regard to that, it looked like it. It looked like you couldn't even tell where the ball was going. Yeah. Um, just over, over on on TV, you just couldn't. It just never got really a good view of the ball. I'm not saying it wasn't foul or wasn't at all, but or that was foul. I just curious how they could even judge that. Um, and, and maybe they maybe they could see that. And I don't know. Maybe you guys could see that on your monitor. But man, it sure it was sure would have been hard to overturn that call. I agree. I mean, the the umpire that's looking at it, what he's looking for is does he see the ball flash? in front of the pole or behind the pole. And in this situation, it was above the pole. They don't have super high poles there. Uh-huh. So it makes it even more difficult. But, you know, it looked like the wind was, was trying to push it, but that it, in my opinion, it looked like it was pretty clear that it it got past the pole before the wind really got to it and pushed it. Because it landed foul. There's no question about that. 
but it's where it goes over the the wall and past that pole. It's not where it lands. And I'll give the umpire credit. He was running down the sure. down mm-hmm. the foul line, so he he had the best view of it of all. And I'm assuming the foul pole extends up like the goalposts do as well. So. In, into infinity. This has been the Morning Drive Podcast, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T 97.3 podcasts at double T 97.3.com.